All right, guys. So we are back with the next match in our series between Lux and Salted Snacks. So Lux came away with the first win in this series. They have unfortunately had the luck of never winning the full best of two series. They only walk away with with one of the two matches. So maybe, maybe they'll be able to get themselves their very first win here. Now, don't know if it'll happen, but we'll see if it does manage to happen. Uh, so the first band's coming on out. We're going to see Hanzo and the Mayab. Uh, kind of the respect band there for swoops, really nice arrows that came on out. And then the Medivh, however, is going to see some action. I'm really hyped to see Medivh because I feel like uh, you, you'll see lower division teams who can't play Medivh because he's a little bit more, uh, he requires more communication and better execution from individual members of the team. And then a lot of times you don't get value out of the protects or even his ability to really do a decent amount of damage. So TDB should be, uh, Blaze TDB should be back on that garage. He played it pretty well. A few cues here and there that, that missed, but they themselves are gonna pick up the Stukov. I mean, Hayes' Stukov looked really nice especially with those stiff arms. He was sending people to another planet. I mean, he almost sent them to another galaxy with how he was landing those bad boys. Now, I got to say that I definitely like that they take this to cover away. And we're going to see a little bit of Team 12, uh, Roll20 Esports. Um, Kind of going on here with with the whole Medivh and Diablo. So they're going to pick up Phoenix again. Keep in mind, Phoenix got countered hard in terms of his actual DPS output. Uh, and he did, however, win the solo lane. So they can opt to do the very same thing here, which is pick up the blaze, counter Phoenix's heroic but know that he's going to lose the actual 1v1 and i don't know if that'll be optimal they might have to opt for someone else who can play from range and potentially uh, stick a little bit better to the lane versus phoenix now i don't know who can because phoenix basically has a ton of hp regen in the form of his shield so he can trade super easily then he ports away and he waits five seconds and he gets you know a massive massive regen boost on his side So, the Blaze is going to be the ban. Um, I'm not quite sure about the Blaze ban. I'm assuming they're trying to force Phoenix to actually be the solo laner again. And this time they have a game plan on how they want to Phoenix. I'm not sure what they're going to opt to do because, like I said, I haven't seen too many people who have successfully beat a Phoenix in lane other than if the Phoenix misplays or there's some solid rotations. So the Genji will now be the ban on this side of Lux. Now, if I'm, if I'm Lux, I'd say, I, I definitely would say that There's something up the sleeve of Salted Snacks. They still need their support. Malfurion is still available. Uh, there was no support lock, locking, if you will, by taking out the Blaze, or sorry, taking out the Malfurion, which is another odd thing because you'll often see the team that picks Dukov bans out the Malfurion, forcing them to go with, quote unquote, a lower tier 
support. Now, in the case of not banning out the Malfurion and going with the Blaze, well, here's here's exactly what's happening. They got Tyrael, who's going to be sitting in that top lane instead of the Blaze. They don't want to give them the opportunity to take Blaze and, and keep them in the four-man because that also hinders a Phoenix's Q build significantly, which is where it was slightly odd that, that we saw Phoenix pick up the Q build because he has to sit bottom for a chunk of it, and he's not going to get those Q stacks until much later into the game. So we're going to get Tyrell and Li Ming. Li Ming is going to be their finisher. And so now they need at least one other ranged DPS. There's no Hanzo for the race. Uh, they could pick up Greymane again here. Greymane's really good on the race here. And the problem in, in, in this particular case, they have to deal with a Diablo on the side of Salted Snacks. However, Lux is going to be picking up that Greymane. Because Greymane, he does have to worry about the silence and the taunt oh, <coughs> excuse me however there is the protection on the side of Medivh so they're also going to get the Rhaegar to be able to give that burst heal and additionally Greyman can go with Cursed Bullet and play more of a ranged build in this particular case uh, and, and go in a little bit later on so normally when I say that Greyman isn't a good pick this would be a little more questionable because there's the Stukov and Garage that can really screw up Grammy's day. Now, on the other hand, the Cursed Bullet on Garage will be pretty high value, especially if they can land it before Diablo uh, wall charges and wall bangs Garage. And if they do manage to do that, that's, that's one tank instantly gone. Now, once he's out of the picture, or if... They're able to bait out a taunt and Greymane is not in there. Greymane can go absolutely crazy, just tear through wh whoever he wants. I mean, they can even go go for the throat to try and kill the Stukov and just annihilate him. And the final pickup here is going to be the Tychus. I really like this Tychus pick because they get the sanctification. They have the Stukov to help with essentially peeling because they can now... Technically, they can now just basically say, well, you want to come in, Diablo? Silence, no flip, no second charge, and we're going to drop the Sanctification so no one can do damage, and Tychus just melts through Diablo's health pool. Medivh will have to be very good about when he drops his Force of Wills to prevent that situation. So, of these two teams... Uh, I, I like Salted Snacks, I think, draft a little bit better this time around in comparison. Um, of course, my webcam isn't properly working, so we're going we're gonna to switch back to the normal view. So Salted Snacks, I kind of like their draft a little bit more. The problem here is that Salted Snacks has gone with a Tyrael in the top lane. And in the top lane, that's where Phoenix is going to be. He's going to, I feel like, lose that lane very hard. Steps. And it's going to be the same story. They're basically going to have to rely on winning the team fights in order to get themselves this immortal because their race is worse, significantly worse, in my opinion. Between Phoenix, Screaming, and Rhaegar, Salted Snacks are going to have to really take it to Lux. They're going to have to grab those peanuts, toss them at Lux, and uh, hope that Luxurian Sun doesn't actually, you know, burn them to a crisp. The other thing that we'll see is how effective Rhaegar's Ancestral Heals are, because that that's really a big deal. I mean, Rhaegar's big heals will be the difference between infrared resetting and probably winning the game and Lux winning the team fight. So we are now in this final match between Luxurian Sun and Salted Snacks with Lux having a 1-0 victory so far. So for Lux, we got Electra once again back on 
that Phoenix. We have Haze on the Rhaegar, Patches on the Greymane, Bay State on the Diablo, and finally we're going to have Swoop swooping on in in Crow form for Hadeev. On the side of Salted Snacks, we got Chips on Tyrael. We got Blaze TDB once again on the Garage. We got Rossi on that Stukov Energy on the Tychus, Infrared on the Li Ming. And that will be a Salted Snacks. A base state coming on in, going to be flipped on back very quickly. Uh, sorry for the lag spike there on my end. Um, so nothing for nothing there. They're going to be pushing on back right now. They can't really get too deep in there because Infrared isn't isn't the best wave clear. Greymane uh, is pretty good wave clear, but with Haze's Lightning Shield, base state can walk on in, help clear up the wave. But it's even for the most part because... They can't venture too far forward because Blaze will just, you know, throw him over. Blaze getting an interesting position here. There's going to be Toss. There's the cube, but he's going to be queuing on out there. TDB in a bad position now. There's a silence onto him. And say goodbye to Garage as he uh, tried to make the cheeky play, and it did not work out. In the top lane, playing out exactly as I thought. We got Electra coming on in. Getting the camp already. This is really efficient use of one time. Chips actually realizes what's going on here. Knowing that he's been pushed out of the lane super hard. is going to come on down and try and stop this. But with Soup here, they really can't do too much. On the other side, however, Bay State and Haze taking a boatload of damage. No one going down, but they do have to deal with camps in all the lanes. So... They've now switched to a 2-3 split, which is very interesting because the top lane was already winning super hard. Swoop coming on in, ensuring that they get that. And at the same time, Salted Snacks not recognizing the rotation of Swoop at all. And so energy very far forward, going to take a bit of damage. TDB um, aiming that Q uh, the wrong way. It might be a little bit drunk. Uh, drunk on power for Garage. And so, lanes are still pretty even. A little bit of an XP lead on the side of Lux. But overall, everything is looking good for both teams. The, the camps have already been used. They were cleared up. Uh, almost cleared up. And like I said, Chip, Chip is out of mana. Completely out of mana here. He has absolutely no way of beating Electra. And Electra is going to get this wall uh, pretty quickly. Now, both teams starting to work on their Immortal... Or sorry, their uh, Bruiser camps. They should both be ready to go pretty shortly here. I'd actually like to see Salted Snacks rotate up to deal with the top. They need to clear this up as a, as a team really fast, or at least one person to help Chips, because he's getting, he's getting absolutely bodied right now. So we're going to have Salted Snacks take the defensive position in the meantime, but no one's helping. I, if they're going to play the defensive position, they should clear this up help chips there's tdb looking for potentially for electra they're not going to catch him they're going to start working on this wall and in the meantime we're actually going to have a state and swoop come on in to start this immortal of course like they really can't do too much in the bot lane on the other hand patches and haze taking down that front wall really exploiting the fact that they know exactly where they are on the side of salted snacks salted snacks is trying to alleviate the pressure on top lane and while they see that happening Lux does the perfect thing, like, well, let's go and get some more structure damage. Like, this Immortal is is the weakest in the game, so taking down structures is going to infinitely be, be better. Base State going right for the base of Rossi, and Rossi will be going on down there as Greymane confirms the kill. And now Blaze TDB is the focus of Lux. They should be able to take this on down right now, and they have already gotten this immortal down to 50 percent just like i said lux has the better the better clear and if they do not win the team fight on the side of salted snacks they lose this game 100 percent. they have to win the team fights otherwise they can never ever win the race and because there's so much pressure from that pick from phoenix electra has basically taking down the front wall for the most part, and they can actually walk on in and take down this fort. They have a level 
seven a talent advantage there's a throw on to base state he will be slowed he, he does have that protect he's taking a boatload of damage and he will be popping on out so looking at the talents we're going to see the insatiable actually coming out here we're also going to the wizen duelist we have the cleanse the healing totem the wolf run we've got winds of celerity we got the Raven Familiar. There's Base State going on in, trying to grab energy. He's been thrown on over, though. However, the very nice silence coming on out. Patch is going to have to back on out. And they've gotten Bucks to be on the run at this point. Swoop dropping that protected. There's another toss onto Base State. He does have a portal to get on out now. And so even though they potentially had the opportunity to get a kill, the Deev just allows the disengage to go through. So, Chip's now going to be the focus here. He has to deal with being targeted by everyone. He does manage to just juke in time with 300 or so health left on, on his health pool. They're trying to save this for it, and I don't know if they'll be able to. Looking for an engage here from TDB. They're trying to go, but Medivh just disengages all day long. This is why you'll see a lot of teams just ban Medivh. Medivh is a nightmare to play against. Uh, do you really want to be chasing an enemy and then all of a sudden you have no one to grab there's tdb getting a nice q he's already completed uh no i thought he already completed that he, so he's up at 10 stacks he needs five more to finish this they are getting this bottom siege camp however and they're sticking as five they realize that it doesn't really work for them to have chips top at least right now it hasn't been working for him there's another Q for TDB. There's a protected. There's the portal. And resident sleeper fight has occurred. This is why you'll see Medivh so commonly banned. Like I was saying, you wait for the portal to be up. Portal comes up. You can fight and be as crazy as you want to be. And then just back on out. So we got Swoop coming on in, scouting out the situation. But it's not going to matter. He actually scares Salta snacks off because they have the 10 advantage. And this was a very nice bluff on the side of Lux. I mean, this is a very safe bluff, but they bluffed Salted Snacks away from the Bruiser camp. So they now have to deal with this Shaman camp. They don't have tens. There's the engage onto energy. He does get thrown out. He will be fine. And there's the portal. So portal play coming out again, making life absolutely terrible for the side of Salted Snacks. There's the throw to keep energy alive and well. And infrared coming on in to drop bombs from the side. Play, trying to play as safe as possible. Swoop now has a portal to prevent infrared from you know, really pushing in from that side. Base state going on in again. APOC still not being used yet. There's the throw. Another nice cube. But setting up for the APOC. APOC is going to come on out. Hits one member. They will focus on down energy and say goodbye to energy. So with energy being out of this, 10 still not being picked up. This is going to be nearly a full immortal. So Wizen Duelist only at two stacks at this point. Um, so not not a whole lot there. At the same time, they re-engage here. There's a throw onto base state. Base state does get the protected. The portal come on out. And there is a taunt from TDB. They have that 10. There's the unstoppable. I, I don't know if it will be enough. The Rhaegar Ancestral does connect. They are now pushing on in. But this immortal is almost done for. This may have actually been a critical, mis critical mistake by Blaze. He got too aggressive coming back on in he however does not have to worry because swoop with those portals and say goodbye to lux because they will now be tapping it up and coming on back tdb getting really nice position trying to prevent them from re-engaging here and they've melted this immortal very very well rossi getting the massive shove not very far energy taking a lot of damage there's the thing and they are now chasing patches 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 will be fine they managed to get and get he manages to get out and you know blaze tdb will be tapping but they'll be able to get this really easily haze is really far on out right now there's a protected they'll finish this up he'll run on out and 
with that extra movement speed. Blaze, though, looking for a fight here. There's another throw. There should be the disengage. Leyline Seal coming on now. Apoc, do we have that? No. There's a shove. Rossi, however, will not be staying long for this world. Patches is still chasing down Chips. Chips is running, but I don't know if he'll be able to make it as he has nowhere to fall back to. There's another down. Base State looking for another kill, and he has been thrown in. There's the taunt. They are trying to kill Base State, and they will not be able to do so. There's the portal. Patches coming on in. Patches trying and not going to be able to confirm anything else so in the meantime we have this immortal pushing in immortal will not be able to get a keep this is good news Odin coming on out i'm not sure if the Onin was really called for, Patch is going to take a boatload of damage from that Onin. There's the APOC onto Energy. They connect, but Energy gets tossed on out. Very nice shove. And there is the Ancestral to keep Patches on up. Base State will be able to get on out. There's the Phoenix using that Purification Salvo. Nothing's happening still. No one is going down here. And we got the Sank. Patches! Patches gets thrown on back. Say goodbye to the Wizen Duelist. And he has lost them. So that fight going back and forth, a lot of heroics being burned. We see Sanctification available again. We have the Massive Shove in the top lane. So Salted Snacks is making their way back into this game. They didn't lose the keep, but this keep is snipable by the likes of Greymane or Phoenix. This was a lot, I feel like, on the side of Lux. They, they basically overstayed for that keep really really want to overpower onto tdb there's a toss tdb has nowhere to go but there is a sanct available if they need it they will just be able to walk on out unstoppable has been burnt by tdb and so they have yet to hit 13 and they do have A's and electra they should identify this situation however there is a medivh medivh will be able to disengage the fight really really quickly and really really easily should they try to fight pi b3 so it's a damned if you do and a damned if you don't. Uh, as someone in my chat said, Medivh debated. Exactly. Like, you basically debate the fight again by having a 5v3 with Medivh just being able to or try and get him to fight, but they're not going to achieve anything. And Odin being used, I'm not sure this was the time. TDB looking for, there's the Q, there's the throw, and are we going to get the taunted? There is no portal for him. And say... Goodbye to Electro. No, but a beautiful Leyline Seal. The Sanctification coming out. The APOC absolutely doing nothing. And they are still looking for the kill. Patches is going to be dismounted. Electro coming on in. And no kills for either team. But a lot of heroics have been used. So, we're going to have Salted Snacks starting up this Immortal. They're going to back on off. They do have Wave of Force. They still have Mash of Shove, as expected. There's a nice shove to keep Diablo from doing a whole lot there. And with Infrared able to drop bombs on the portal, there's the Overpower onto TDB. We finally got Arcane done for it. Purification Salvo coming on out, but the Root from Sukhov Chips just barely surviving there. And they're looking for the re-engage, and Chips will be able to survive, however. There's the Overpower on Energy, and say goodbye to Energy. And another kill for the side of Lux. So this is a pretty big bloodbath, these fights, where people are taking tons of damage. Some people are going down every once in a while, but I mean, this is all-out brawls between both teams. And without their Tychus, their, their actual race is significantly diminished. I mean, they do have... You know, they actually have Illusionist coming out here. They do catch out Blaze TDB, however, and I don't know if he'll be able to make it. The Holy Ground coming on out. The Ley Line Seal has been used, and Stukov is now going to be chased on down. There's the portal, the body blocks. Bay State has now caught himself a Rossi, and say goodbye to Stukov. So, Odin has been used. The Odin will get absolutely nothing done here. Bay State is sitting here trying to be able to get some more wall banks. He should have some stacks here on the Diablo. He has three right now. And so there's the re-engage. There's the throw onto base. He has no one near him. He can't get to that portal. He's getting body blocked, but so is he to be. There's a purification salvo. The armor, though, from the Q will not be enough as Electra secures two kills. So 
this keep is going to be going down. This immortal is going to be at roughly 50% in pushing gain in the top lane. Catapults will start spawning now in the bot lane. This is going to be really difficult for Salted Snacks to come back from. They're also going to be down a 16 versus 13 scenario, which is not what you want to see. 16 versus 13, a half shielded immortal. I'm really scared for Salted Snacks right now. I don't believe they can actually defend this because they don't have Odin available at all. What they need is an insane mass shove from, from Rossi to actually send someone to another planet. Blaze coming on in. He's looking for it. He can't actually throw anyone anywhere. And Blaze is getting annihilated. He does manage to take and <clears throat> get on out of there. He was super low. Walks away. And that's what you want to see. Uh, Apoc coming on in. A dry Apoc catching no one. But he does stun Rossi. And Rossi will not be long for this world. The sanctification comes on out. But it's not going to be enough. There's the Ley Lion Seal. And they are still looking for more blood. They take down the keep. And they are looking to end this game at this very moment. Blaze is going to be going on down. There is a big, big damage onto Electra As Infrared connects with the bomb of that orb. However, Core is taking damage. Shield's about to drop. Infrared trying to heal up as much as possible. Energy trying his best, but he is not going to be staying up here. And they have done it. Lux have confirmed their very first domination win against one of the top three teams currently in Heroic Division. So Lux going to be jumping on up in those standings quite heavily. And I got to applaud... Lux, they looked good and they played quite well. So I gave this game initially to Salted Snacks. I thought their draft looked good and that they could secure kills and win the team fights. However, however, they weren't able to. I kind of miscalculated the mid factor of like, okay, they're going to be doing damage. They're going to be dropping bombs. They're going to be melting Diablo. But guess what? It doesn't matter. There's a portal. Say goodbye to your your uh, least favorite heroes or your least favorite enemy team. Maybe your most favorite enemy team. But say goodbye to the enemy team. As Medivh says, we're out of here. And there's so much damage that came on down from the side of Tychus and Li Ming, but it didn't matter ultimately. They had they had 23k shielding. That's a lot. And then they had 50k healing. That combined is more healing than Stukov got alone. I mean if we take a look at healing and shielding 4k uh, from material not too much and, and a quick look at the talents like i missed the talents because there was so much happening in that game this is for all stellar angel swift ret uh sanctification the holy ground we got the defensive measures warlord challenge into the fray indomitable core breaker dash in the rhythm quarterback commander odin that's the stuff. So what, what's interesting, they chose in the rhythm instead of uh, the bigger they are, especially with that's the stuff. And it requires in the rhythm to complete or your minigun to complete before it actually will heal. So I feel like this is a miscalculation for energy to have chosen this, especially against a Diablo. Like your goal is to nuke the Diablo, get him down as low as possible, and just finish him off, especially when you have to deal with Medivh uh, and kill him before he's able to get to the portal. We got the Power Hungry coming on out, the Dominance, Calamity, the Wave of Force, Illusionist. And then we have the Virulent Reaction, Massive Shove, Within My Reach, uh, One Good Spread, and Growing Infestation. On the other side, we had the normal Diablo build. We had Soul Shield come out since he was a solo tank, uh, although there was only really Li Ming to drop a ton of damage on him, magic damage. Uh, we had the APOC, we had Devastating Charge, and of course Domination. On the other side, we had the Wolfheart, the Stationable, Wizen Duelist, Go for the Throat, Running Wild, and Executioner. We had the Wolf Run, the Healing Totem, the Cleanse, Ancestral Healing, Earth Shield, and finally Earth Grasp Totem. For the Medivh, Winds of Celerity, Rat and Raven Familiar, Arcane Explosion, Daylight Seal, 
Enduring Will, and Stable Portal. And then finally, Advanced Targeting, Emergency Protocol, Combat Advantage, Purification Salvo, Zero auxiliary shields and finally arsenal overcharge now like i said very nicely done by lux they really dominated that game and i actually think it was in part due to swoops uh medib i mean disengage after disengage after disengage so sit on tight we're about to go to um go to an actual interview with swoop so let me hit up the discord grab him into one of the NGS channels so that you can all enjoy um, his thoughts on the match between the two. All right, it should just be a second.